Oh way, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this morning or afternoon I was able to uh, give your video a little bit more attention, your recent video, um, the is ought continued, and the length of that was 4 minutes and 27 seconds just for reference, and I will uh, attempt to, to post this as a video response as soon as I'm done recording here and, and uploading, um, which has to be done first. Um, yeah, I think we are definitely making some progress. Thank you for the clarification on um, some of the issues, uh, maybe issues of vagueness on my part um, in this uh, discussion. Uh, you uh, you mentioned accounting. We have been talking about accounting for moral uh, behaviors, and I am using accounting, I think, in a, in a slightly different way. Um, I, th I think we can... Um, maybe come to an agreement that we are um, looking at different um, areas of morality. I'm talking about accounting as in giving a, a, a justification for why there exist duties or obligations, ethical duties and, and obligations. Um, we in I'm not espousing command theory per se. What I am doing is I'm using command theory to show something about language and grammar. This may be something that Hume only incidentally or subsidiarily was uh, affected or attempted and that G.E. Moore clarified further. Um, but from a descriptive statement, we can't uh, arrive at a prescriptive duty. And I know I've repeated that a lot, and I think it, it bears uh, repeating, though, in the context where we're talking about um, actually like a stronger sense of justifying moral claims. Um, now, we, will, we should talk a little bit about objectivity in morality, then, and you're saying that um, from your position, it, rightfully, you wouldn't have an, um, a do, any uh, objective moral duties. Now, in my original video, um, br I think it was bridging the is ought gap, I talked about that in that I, I actually made kind of a bold, sweeping statement. I said it doesn't matter whether or not you hold personally to the subjectivity or the objectivity of moral values. Now, the reason why I said that, I, I probably didn't explain it well enough in that original video, although I, I hoped to, that I had covered the enough ground, but, but I needed to clarify there. Um, there. There has to exist at least one ethical obligation that's, that's absolutely... Um, objective and universal and sweeping in order for just a basic discussion to exist or continue. In order for a, a, a conversation to take place on a topic, there must exist values that are transcultural in order for that conversation to take place, whether it's about physics, uh, uh, theoretical physics, or uh, about morality, or about how evolution occurred, or how uh, whether um, uh, the Bible provides a basis for morality, any of those topics require a commitment to an objective moral duty. Why would I say that? Well, in some cultures, you aren't allowed, of course, to um, to have a conversation like that um, because if you offend someone, they uh, may uh, silence you or or whatever. Um, so you in, know, in order to have that conversation, there must be an objective duty that transcends culture. So it has to it has to go beyond cultures and cultures that would perhaps silence dialogue on issues. Um, so I, I that's really what I maybe I needed to clarify there. Um, so at two minutes into it, um, we were talking. You you mentioned uh, um, this concept of indifference toward children um, that would not have evolutionarily survived uh, given how um, those families that do not take care adequately of their young would, would just simply not have, their young would not have survived. Well, um, this is, this ties into what I was just talking about in terms of the ignorance um, accounting for something, giving a, a giving an explanation or a description for how something may have occurred, and actually justifying the morality of ca taking care of your children and not being indifferent toward them. So, if we're talking about justifying 
a not non indifference, um, taking care of them, nurturing children in your values. We we don't get that from an evolutionary framework because again we're just then we're just dealing with descriptive statements. We can't derive an objective universal moral norm or obligation from that. We're just saying maybe what happened, um, not whether or not that's right or wrong. That's completely irrelevant to it. And that's really what I think both Hume and G.E. Moore um, have established and further developed in, in their uh, body of work. Um, so, um, let's see, the, so the evolutionary survival of a trait does not justify that trait as moral. That's basically what I'm, what I'm uh, grasping at there. I'm just going to quickly uh, turn my note card over. I'm finishing a cup of coffee here. Um, around 2.30, um, you talk about tribalism. Um, now, again, the um, tribalism, just as the, um, the indifference towards children that parents might display or might, might not evolutionarily survive, that's really the same issue there. So, because groups have been tribal and have caused the um, survival of certain traits does not justify morally those traits. Um, as a matter of fact, even going into your example, delving into your example about kindness versus cruelty, what some cultures might view as um, kind or necessary, others may see as absolutely uh, horrible. Some of the rites of passage uh, that occur in certain cultures um, would be abhorrent to, to other cultures. So the, the fact that they've survived doesn't justify them morally. Um, and um, so again, uh, let's see, at 350, um, you mentioned the command theory. And again, I'm not, what I'm developing from a command theory is the notion that we must um, not, or, or we don't have a logical status of a prescription which is uh, derived from a description. That's what I'm attempting to do from a command theory, not to show that command theory is the uh, the only way uh, that we could have ethical norms. Um, so I, I hope that uh, that clarifies things. From command theory, we derive that um, something about the status of, of sentences, that certain ones are um, commands and those are completely different from those that are uh, statements that are descriptions or st sentences that have a, a descriptive uh, function in the English language. All right, thank you very much, and I hope we can continue to dialogue this further. Bye-bye. <laughs>